Hey, how's it going? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Of course, of course. Thank you for making time to to uh, be in the show. Absolutely. So, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do, who you are, and uh, you know all that nice stuff. Okay. Well, I'm Carla Anthony. I'm your sister. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about myself. I'm a Latina. I was born in Mexico. Um, we grew up majority of our childhood in Texas, moved to Arizona. We've been here ever since. Um, this is where I met the love of my life, you know, had two amazing kiddos, um, et cetera. I'm also an endometriosis warrior. Um, I've always been passionate about health, the human body, which ultimately led me to where I am today. And I am a women's online health and fitness coach. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's really good. How did you? Uh, how did you become? First, become interested in this field. Like, when was it? Have you always done this, or what did you do before you did this? Okay, so um, I've been doing this for about two and a half years. I'll be going on to three years, like professionally, right? Certified, everything mm -hmm. like that. But I found myself really intrigued with health and nutrition and movement when I was 16. And like, I can actually go back in time and think about that day where I just had a lot of interest in it. And, you know, I would pick up magazines, I'd watch videos, um, I'd do workouts in my own room. You know, I would go take uh, some wooden sticks from dad's garage mm -hmm. and I'd use them kind of like a barbell. And that was just me starting, you know, that journey. And of course, like life happens, you know, so it took a little bit of a turn. Um, but I always came back to this, whether it was nursing, um, you know, anything in like in health, you know, in that mm -hmm. field really just like lit this fire in my soul. And I was actually a preschool teacher and director mm -hmm. for 17 years oh, wow. since I was 16 years old. I, I did that and I absolutely loved it. I truly did. And it helped me grow and challenge myself um, in different ways. So I never regret that part of my life. If anything, I'm grateful for it. And it's really showing me who I am and what I want, right? Mm -hmm. But I felt like I was in a very comfortable place and I'm always looking to grow. I yearn for like development and to continue, you know, mm -hmm. um, expanding myself. And I that's when I knew like I need to take that step because... Mm -hmm this is, this was still calling for me, you know, yeah. and I do miss working with children, but mm -hmm. you know, I've always been told, Hey, you should be a teacher or you're amazing at that. You know, now I see myself teaching women, right. Mm -hmm. How to take care of themselves, how to prioritize their health and their wellness. So to me, truly, it kind of like goes full circle. Like everything that I've done in my life kind of like intertwines together. Yes. I feel like, uh, a lot of people get, a lot of people get comfortable and uh, with in the, in the position or the spot that they are in life. And I, sometimes when you are too comfortable, you kind of just stay there for a very, very long time. And when you're trying to do something new or trying to do something that you've always wanted to do, it's harder because now, now you've been stuck in one spot for so, so many years that it's really hard to kind of come out and start all over again. And a lot of people, I believe, fail that. They fail because they're they're, they once they jump out of there and they're like, oh my god, I can't do this because they have yeah. to go back to their safe spot, which yes. is where they were comfortable at. Mm -hmm. So that's good that you were able to, to you know, get out of there and 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 do what what you've always wanted to do, right? Which yeah. was your calling to do. What are your What are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced in this uh, in in your career, in this new career that, and and how have you overcome them? Okay. Well, like there's different layers to that. Um, mm -hmm. when it came to actually taking that step towards, you know, um, becoming a health and fitness coach, like mm -hmm. you were talking about, it was very uncomfortable, like mm -hmm. being out of that comfort zone, out of that bubble of, I right, I basically peaked right where I was. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt really confident, 
I was good at what I was doing. I loved it. I was like, hell yeah, let's go. Yeah. And stepping away from that was almost like culture shock because yeah. it was the first time, like my last career, what I started that at 16. So technically I've only had two careers that, and now this. Wow. So for me, it was like an overwhelming, um, situation where I had to learn something from the ground up, right? Like I was starting a new foundation and this kind of ties into some of the difficulties and the challenges. Once you are in the health and fitness space, especially as an online coach like me, it can be so difficult to find yourself, your voice, um, who you are and what you bring, right? Your uniqueness into, into what you do. And you know, I worked with a training company Mm -hmm. and I found myself in a really difficult position. Um, I really couldn't find my niche, right? Like Mm -hmm. what do I, what do I want to train? What, you know, how do I want to help women? Everybody has a niche, things that, that really they're passionate about that really just sparks that, that fire. And, you know, finding that voice was probably, one of my biggest challenges and difficulties, finding myself in a sea of like fitness trainers and different ways of approaching things. Like it's, it's this insane amount, right. Of information, of education, of approaches. Mm -hmm. So really trying to like put the blinders on and to just like connect with yourself Mm -hmm. and kind of like navigate your way through through all these waters, these murky waters to truly find who you are and what you want to be in this space. So it's, it's constant challenge. It's constant stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, it's holding true to your values and your morals and your integrity so that you don't get lost in the jumble. Do you feel like, do you feel like when you, uh, when you're coaching your, your, your clients, do you feel like you, it takes a little bit from you? Meaning, uh, do you, when you're coaching them, do you kind of like, oh man, it's hard to get that motivation. It's hard to like, who coaches you, right? So that's like, yeah. like who coaches you? Do you use, do you use like self-motivation? Do you, uh, this, is it hard? Because it, it, when you're talking to people and you're coaching people, they take a lot from you. Like if you believe in, you know, that stuff where, where people can take your energy Yes. And your focus, <laughs> you know, like, how do you, how do you get out of there? Like, how do you manage to, to keep your focus? And, and also you, you have a, a, a normal life, right? Which with family, so yeah. how do you, how do you stay on track? So that is something that I've had to learn. Um, I'm an empath. I feel everyone's energy. I feel for situations and things that people go through. So it's something that I had to really navigate carefully because I had to set I had to set boundaries with myself, right? And like professionally as well. Because I have a chronic illness, even more so, I become depleted, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, like it's all intertwined. So I had to kind of draw that line for myself, right? Where I'm like, okay, like I have to know when I've reached that point. Um, I set myself up in the day to where I'm not burnt out, right? Mm-hmm. I've, I've hit these points. I've hit these points um, when I was working with 75 clients. I had 75 wow. clients at one point, and I found myself that that is not realistic mm-hmm. and it's not healthy because I can't give them what they deserve and what they need and what they're ultimately paying for, right? right. Because I was pouring. I was outpouring, you know, from my own cup. So I was giving, 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 which I absolutely love. But then Mm -hmm. on my end, I was feeling burnt out. I was feeling fatigued. I was feeling, you know, my health took a toll. Um, My balance was off. I'm a Libra. I'm all about balance. Like (laughs) I have to be able to to have my life like this. Sometimes, you know, they they Mm -hmm. tip and, and whatnot. But I find myself being able to bring them back to where they need to be. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Like being a coach, we're not just like, hey, work out like this, mm-hmm. eat that, right? Because we're human beings. So right. my ladies are coming to me, you know, with with all kinds, they're, they're coming to me from different walks of life, right? And everybody's, mm-hmm. um, everybody's so different and their experiences are so different. So I have to be able to navigate each one as an individual 
mm-hmm. who they are. And I have to be able to also fill my cup so that yeah. I can continue being there for them as well. And I don't work with a coach. I have in the past, um, but I find that with my chronic illness, I know how to navigate my ebbs and flows a lot better on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really lean heavily on my husband um, on, you know, on, on my sister, my mom, you know, I have friends as well who are in this, in this field and, and they're so supportive and they're so caring and mm. they help kind of balance me back out or just even sometimes hear me out. And yeah. and that's all I need, right? Like I ensure that I take care of myself, that I move my body, that I feel myself, that I hydrate, that I sleep, because these are all things that are ultimately going to give me the energy, the mental clarity, the stamina, the endurance to do what I love to do and yes. still be able to live my life. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. What uh since you've been on, you know, been doing this for you said two and a half years. Yeah. What advice would you give someone who is just starting out in the field? Like what, uh, what pointers can you give them? Uh, take it easy or focus on this? Cause you know, there's a lot of people that, uh, for instance, that, you know, like yourself, that right. you've been doing something and you jump into this and there's nobody really to guide you or mm-hmm. you don't know what to expect. You're kind of just out there. But since you've been doing this now for two and a half years, yeah, which is good. What, what are some of the things that you can share to, uh, new upcomers uh, that are in in, in coaching and filth and and in the in the health and, and fitness world. Mm-hmm. Oh man, like I wish someone would have told me this, <laughs> right? Like, make connections, ask questions. There's a lot of us out there, and having that support system is so helpful and such a game changer because you can feel like a sitting duck in this huge, large pond, like I was kind of talking about earlier Mm -hmm. and you kind of get lost right in, in, in like this, this sea of trainers and information. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's so helpful to have that support system, which I have, um, with the training team that I was with previously, Mm -hmm. I developed some great friendships. Um, and we're, we're this group of women who are passionate, who, you know, share a lot of the same values and morals. Um, and our goal is to continue empowering women and continue, you know, um, changing their lives and, you know, creating opportunities for other women, especially women of color. Mm -hmm. So my, my advice to someone starting, you know, new and having no connections is start reaching out you know, to people you follow, like, let's say someone's a new coach and they see me and they follow me say, Hey, you know, Hey, I'm new here. Like I'm just getting my toes wet. Like, is there any, any advice you can give me? Like we're all here in this together and it's important to not feel alone because it can become very overwhelming, Mm -hmm. very overwhelming. And sometimes, you know, you forget about your own your own morals and your own values because you decide to jump on board with something else that's not aligning with you. And then you kind of feel like, okay, this is it for me. And if I leave here, I can't do what I love. You, you absolutely can. And you have to stay true to yourself because then you lose yourself to something you don't believe in anymore, you know? So definitely make the connections, ask questions, reach out. Don't, don't be embarrassed. Don't feel afraid. Like we're all in it together. Do you feel like there's a lot of uh, competition in this kind of field? Do you feel like maybe some people are just scared to ask because there's a lot of people that are like, screw you. I'm not going to help you because I'm, you know, I'm trying to promote my own brand. Uh, do you, do you feel that it's, it's like that for some people or, or is this community more uh, willing to help uh, newcomers? Mm, there's definitely the scarcity mindset. Where you feel like, you know, oh, like not necessarily myself, but there are situations where maybe you're not supporting someone else or you're not pushing someone else's content out there because you're like, well, I want to grow my business too. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is where like I, I kind of like talked about making those connections and getting to know people because you're going to find that yes, while there are others who, you know, do navigate their businesses that way. Mm -hmm. There's those that don't. There are like, for me, 
there's women out there who support me, who cheer me on, who challenge me, who push me outside of my comfort zone, even to this day. Like I have, you know, the, the women that I work with, my friends, uh, we all own our own businesses. Mm hmm. Um, and we support one another. We pick each other's brains. We cheer each other on. It's just really cool to see that. So yeah, like the scarcity mindset can absolutely have, you know, cause people to not want to refer, you know, if maybe it's not your ideal client, but you want that client or maybe, you know, they, they want that income. So they're not going to refer that client to someone who would probably be best for them. Like, let's say, you know, I get someone who has, underlying issues or, you know, um, illnesses that, I, that are out of my scope of practice, mm -hmm. that's not my ideal client, number one, because there is a lot of, you know, health concerns that I can't, you know, ethically treat or work with, right? So right. I have to be able to refer them to an RD or, you know, someone who who, who is able to within their scope of practice. So that's where, you know, you can empower one another and you can support one another and not feel like, no, I'm going to take that client for myself. Right. Like, right. so yeah, like you do come across people who are like that um, because it can be a very toxic culture, but you also have a lot of people, women and men out there who want to help each other out like genuinely. Right. That's good. I feel like sometimes, um, how can I put it? I feel I feel like in, in, in industry like this, there is a lot of people, right? There's a lot of trainers. There's a lot of people trying to do fitness, right? Especially during the pandemic and COVID. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people that that wanted to be more healthy and they used it as something to propel themselves so they can promote health. And then they figured out, okay, I can do I can do this, you know, and I, I can uh, I can start my own business. But mm -hmm. I think in the end, like even though there is a lot of competition, mm -hmm. I think in the end, it's you pick the right person, right? It's not necessarily means that it's say if I was a trainer, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that I am going to be the right one for that person. Exactly. So it's yeah. like you have to find, you kind of have to find that person where like, oh, I can relate. Yes. Oh, I see what's going on. Like, I feel it. Like, she motivates mm -hmm. me. He motivates me. You know, it's it's kind of like having a show, right? It, yeah. Just because I have a podcast, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to listen to it. Some people are going to be like, eh, this is not what I'm looking for. It's whatever. And then they, they just yeah. go to the next one. And and I feel like if you're really good at what you do, especially in fitness and health, I feel like you will stand, you will stand aside, you will stand on the other side, right? Because there's mm -hmm. so many, but if you're really good and you're compassionate and caring and all that, all that stuff, right? I feel like you can stand like aside from from the group, right? And I feel like yeah. you'll start getting more people. People will start being to uh, are, are going to be able to relate to you, mm -hmm. and they'll start following you, and all that kinds of all that all that nice stuff, right? So I feel that it's important that a lot of people forget that we they don't they don't empathize anymore with people. It's all about the money, mm -hmm. and uh, that's all they look for, right? It's one person here. Oh, I'm going to make some more money, but they forget right. that. It's like doctors. You go to the doctor and you're there for five minutes and you're mad because it's like, man, this guy doesn't even, didn't even talk to me, talk to my kids, doesn't, exactly. doesn't want to get to know me. We're just a pay, we're just this paycheck, right? But the doctors that are super busy that never have any problem getting uh, more patients are the ones that take their time to say hi to the parents, say hi to the kids and, you know, how are you feeling? Hey, you want a lollipop? How's your day? And, and, and sit there and talk to them like they're not in a hurry connection, connection, human connection, yes. you know, that's so important. Like yes. the, you're so right on everything. Like you, you hit it spot on. You're the right fit for the right person. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Like mm -hmm. I can't train every single woman. And the thing is, is that there's room for everyone. Like mm -hmm. there's room for everyone to grow. There's, ev there's room for everyone to succeed. There are millions of people out there, right? Like, yes. you know, there, there is going to be the right fit for each of us. And, and all of us bring something unique to the fitness space. You know, I am focused on moms, on women with endometriosis, women that, that struggle with chronic illness and balancing, you know, their health and their fitness. Um, I also work with menopausal women. So those are like, those are my, that's my niche, right? Like mm -hmm. that is what I do. So let's say someone's coming in who wants to, you know, do like, um, power lifting. I'm not going to be the right coach for them. And that's okay. Right. right? Like, you know, they're going to have to keep 
going on. They might like my content and resonate with a lot of it, but their goals are different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's where we all have to understand that like there's room for all of us. And same thing with podcasts, right? Like there's room for, for all of you. And, you know, you're the right fit for the right person. That person that comes to your po- podcast, it's because they connected with you. They resonated right. with you. And, and you hit it too as well with the connection. You know, that's important because I want to be able to offer my clients what they deserve, right? And it's not a, oh, bam, boom, you're in, you're good keep doing your thing. Like I, I like to connect with my clients. I like to understand and listen to them and know where they're coming from. Because as a coach, I have to be able to, to adjust Mm -hmm. and, and figure out, okay, like what's going to work for my client right now Mm -hmm. in their current situation with everything, you know, that's going on in their life. You know, do we need to adjust our approach? Do we need to adjust our expectations? Right. Do we need to, you know, kind of like scale it back a little bit. So it really comes down to individualizing, what you do for each person. Mm. Um, but yeah, nice. like there's room for all of us. That makes sense. Have you ever had a, a um, tough decision and like to make with either a client or, you know, professionally, like how did you approach it? Like either um, I had a, you know, it wasn't going to work or maybe you, maybe you are like, I don't know if I can help this person. And, and how did you tell them? How did you t- take care of the situation without, you know, because a lot of people that have, they're going through stuff like this with fitness and uh, they're, sometimes they're super sensitive. So yeah. you can't just be like, ah, you know, I can't help you out. Peace. And like you can't just, how, how do you, how do you approach a situation when there's somebody that you just can't, it's either they're not following what they have to follow or they're, they're just not the right fit. Like how do you, have you ever had anything like that before? I, I have actually one, 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 um, situation where I was working with a client and this client was not actually in the right place for coaching. And what I mean by that is there was a lot of external factors in her life, um, that were causing a lot of stress, you know, um, depression, anxiety, things that are absolutely out of my scope of practice, right? Like, I'm not a therapist. There's only so much support and there's only so much that we can focus on, you know, when we're working with the client. And then there's those, you know, those concerns or those, those instances where I have to be able to acknowledge and be self-aware like, okay, you know what, this is, this is out of my scope. This is not something that I should be tapping into because I'm not going to give her what she needs and deserves for this. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to set a boundary because, you know, that client was kind of crossing that fine line. There's a, there's a very fine line that we ride, you know, where it, it kind of turns into therapist and not health and fitness coach. And we were crossing that boundary often and it was becoming very uncomfortable for me. So I, I had to set that boundary and very gently, right. And very carefully because this wasn't, this wasn't her fault, right? She wasn't, you know, intentionally doing this. She had a lot, she was going through a lot. So I had to, I had to acknowledge that and, and also like give her grace and, and kindness and patience. And, you know, I understood that there was some difficulties in her life. So I had to let her know, Hey, you know what? Like perhaps we're not in a place where this style and type of coaching is what you need right now. You know, um, professionally, I feel that it would be best, right? If, you know, you work in these other areas of your life and when you're ready, right? When you're in a different space and you're able to take on what we're doing here together, I'll be here waiting for you, right? Like it's understanding like, okay, like this is, this is not an area for me. And, but also letting her know like, Hey, I I understand, but I will be here when you're ready, when you feel ready, you know, to take on more of, of what we're doing here together. So yeah, like that was, that was my first experience. It's the only one that I've had. Um, but I learned a lot from it. That's good. Have you ever had any like wackos, like just ask you some random questions, you know, some, some crazy stuff or like, you know what I mean? Like just because you're, you're open to the public, right? Like you have your, your Instagram page. So like you ever had like people ask you like weird stuff, like just, weird stuff like supplements or they are like are steroids good for you like just weird 
<laughs> fitness stuff. Have you ever had anything like um, that? I've had a few. Yeah. Like they'll slip into my DMs, you know, yeah. and it's valid. Um, they're just wanting to know, you know, like they want more education on it. And that's the thing, right? Is, is you want to be able to provide them with the real shit, you know, not like, you know, like science-based evidence. Like, yeah. you know, you don't want to just be like, well, you know, like you want to give them the reason why, like yeah. educate, you know, people. And that's what I do on my Instagram. Like I, I educate, you know, anyone who wants to stop by and take a look. So, you know, I, I don't know if they're wackos, but you know, there are those questions out there because people, people don't know, right? Like, especially yeah. with like pets and, and, mm. you know, things like that, like people get curious and yeah. it's important to know, like, mm, you know, like what's out there right. <laughs> and, uh, how, and how sense. it can affect your body because damn. That makes sense. I was just wondering if you ever had like, you know, some roided out dude, like I need some help, you know, like. Just oh no, all, gosh, like, no. I, I definitely attract a very specific <laughs> <laughs> like population. <laughs> and if there is any like creeps out there, I block, I'm really good at blocking. Wow, so that's good, that's uh, yeah, my, my block <laughs> list is I can scroll <laughs> that sucker like so many times. <laughs> Cause there is just weird people. I'm telling you, there just is. How do you like continue to learn and develop? your skills and knowledge in this field after, you know, when you, you're super busy, it looks like mm-hmm. you're super busy, but how do you, how do you keep up to date? How do you, in the middle of all this craziness, how do you keep learning? There's always room for growth, you know, especially like in this space, the health and fitness space, it's ever evolving. It's mm-hmm. always changing. There's always new discoveries. Like, as a coach, it's important to broaden your horizon, so to speak, right? Um, yeah. To stay up to date with your certifications. Not just that, like anybody can get certified, right? But to mm-hmm. actually implement them, practice that. Um, not only that, but also be aware of like fad diets, societal mm-hmm. expectations, stigmas. Like there's a lot <laughs> as a yeah. health and fitness coach that you have to be aware of and that you have to kind of like expose yourself to so that you know and understand where your clients are coming from. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's a matter of figuring out what it is that you want to focus on and continuing to grow, you know, but also be aware of everything else that is in this field so that you're not like, Oh, I don't, I don't know about that. Right. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't like to say, I don't know to people. I like to say, Hey, you know what? Let me find out. Or, you know what? Let me get, let me gather some more information on this and I'll get back to you. So it's just, it's continuously, you know, challenging yourself and growing yourself and, and just, you know, expanding your education any way that you can. I feel like there's a lot of, there's just so much stuff out there. People are trying to make money and it's so simple to like, I'm going to make this pill right here and I'm going to call it like, the super fat burner in two weeks and like everybody buys it and you have a bunch of people buying the fat burner pill and then they're like, I haven't lost any weight. Well, it's not even real. I mean, how do you even know that this shit's real that, that that they're actually making? How is it? How, how, how how do you do it? Like when, what do you like suggest? I know that there's some things that you can't tell them, but when they're, when they're telling you, look, look, I have this product, I bought this product. What do you think about it? Mm-hmm. And do you give them like a different, uh, like a different option or like, Hey, maybe just do something natural, you know, like try mm-hmm. this or is there things like that, that you have to go through on your, with your clients? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like fad diets and pills and things like that are something that we're always like having to deal with, you know, um, I've had, I have had instances where, you know, a client will be like, Hey, I saw this fat burner. Do you think it would help me, you know, lose a couple more pounds, drop some fat. And, and every woman is, is, is allowed to navigate her journey the way that she wants. Right. Like I'm not here to tell someone, no, you're not doing that. That's not my job. My job is to educate them and to provide them with knowledge so that they know you know, what to expect, what they're getting into, how it's going to affect their body. So let's say like a fat burning pill, truly, you might as well flush your money down the toilet. Like Mm. that shit doesn't work. Right. To me, it's more of a placebo effect truly, because let's say they're taking this, this fat burner and they're like, fuck yeah. Right. Not only are they taking the fat burner, but I can guarantee you that they're going to 
switch up their nutrition. They're going to be moving more. They're going to be drinking lots of water. Why? Because they want to support this fat burner. It's not really the fat burner that's, that's making this change happen. It's their lifestyle and their habits. So it's more of in here, right? And understanding like not only that, but fat burners have adverse side effects and they can really hurt your liver. So, you know, it's, it's, it's educating them and providing them with, once again, science-based evidence um, about how this can affect them and why it might not be the best idea for them. Makes sense. What, um, what trends or changes do you see coming in your industry and like, how do you plan to adapt to them as time goes, as this gets bigger? You know, it's funny because it seems like trends shift. Like right now, I feel like we're, it's kind of trending in a really good direction, right? Like, Mm -hmm. like neutral, neutral, neutral body, um, celebrating our natural bodies. You know, there's this empowering movement happening right now um, when it comes to health and wellness and fitness and and our relationship with food. But just as that's prevalent, there's still a lot of ideologies and a lot of ways of thinking and fat diets to kind of counteract all of that, right? So that's one of my goals to keep pushing. I've always pushed against the current. <laughs> like right. I, I don't, I don't go where the wind blows. I'm always like fighting it. Right. And the, what I can do is continue providing more education, you know, um, and you know, more empowerment to women to help them realize that they are more in control than they're actually aware of mm-hmm. and to watch out for all of these fad diets and restrictions and unhealthy ways of trying to reach their goals Mm -hmm. and what health actually means, you know? So it's just a matter of, of like staying on top of it because I, Mm -hmm. I see it on my feed being in the space. I see all of these things happening, you know, and, 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 and things that are trending. So it's just being aware of them. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Do you, um, I know we talked a little bit about it at the beginning, but uh, balance of work and, mm-hmm. and personal life, right? So uh, I'm trying to, uh, basically, uh, this, this episode is I want to, try. I'm trying to steer it more for professional mm-hmm. so people know who you are, what okay. you're doing, what you're trying to do, right? But obviously there is where the professional side and there's also the the personal side. Mm -hmm. So with kids and husband and food, having to make food, having to do this, I'm sure you have puppies, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you balance everything together where it works for everyone? And I'm sure, and I'm sure there's going to be times where you're, you're exhausted and you're like, Oh man, this sucks. But how's the, how's the balance? Like, how are you doing it? Trial and error. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when I first started this, I had zero boundaries and I'm not even afraid to admit this. I threw myself at it so hard that I hit rock bottom. I did. Um, it aggravated my, my chronic illness. Um, it really put a damper on my marriage. Um, it affected my mental health. I was in a really bad, dark place. Mm-hmm. Um, this is where I also had to make a decision like, okay, how, how, how can it be that what I love to do and what I'm passionate about is affecting my life like this, right? Mm -hmm. This can't be life. This, this can't be the feeling you have when you're doing what you love and what you've always dreamed of. Like I have to find balance, you know? And I, man, when I tell you I would cry, I had days where I couldn't get out of bed, um, guilt, shame, you know, all of these mindsets that I had about the way that I was navigating my career. And I had to be really honest with myself. And, you know, I had a lot of conversations with Zach and um, I could see myself, you know, trending this way, making these choices, but I couldn't stop. And finally, like I said, I hit rock fucking bottom 
And I made that choice to walk away from where I was at and take the reins of my own life and my own business. And I set really hard fucking boundaries, really hard boundaries. Like I drew that line and I was like, I'm not crossing it. I'm not crossing it. Like I have, I, I learned how to have a schedule for myself, um, how to honor that schedule and how to not push outside of it, outside of it, because I wanted to have a life, <laughs> you right. know? Right. So I gave myself working hours from let's say 9am to 2pm if I'm working part time, right? Maybe those hours are extended a little bit more. But now I have slots, slots, you know, from this time to this time, I'm going to be doing check ins with my clients. From this time to this time, I'm going to be studying and working on my cert, which is now I got my cert thanks to Mm -hmm. these boundaries that I set from this time and this time I'm going to be working on my social media. This has been life changing for me and it has allowed me to put all of my time and effort that's allocated to my business by honoring those work times, those work hours. And then when it's like, if you have an office, right, you're, you're going to close shop and you're going to leave for the day. I, I don't get to leave. Like this is, this is my space, right? Like I carry my job on my phone. (laughs) Like it's hard to set that boundary. So I have like a folder just for all my work stuff. And that folder is at the very end of my phone because I was finding myself constantly checking it, answering questions, not setting that boundary. And I was burnt out. And I even asked myself, is this truly what I want to do? Like, is this what this feels like? Because this is fucked up, you know? So now I have my days set. I, I realize there's only so many hours in the day and I can own my own business and do what I love and still live my life and pour into myself, my marriage, my kids, my family. Like sometimes that schedule is not going to be perfect. Shit's going to hit the fan. I need to go pick up a kid early from school. You know, something doesn't go right, Mm -hmm. but I have found flexibility within myself and grace and kindness to know that, Hey, it's okay. Maybe it's not exactly what you planned, but let's keep going. So I've really had to set those, those really hard boundaries for me personally and professionally so that I, I can be successful. I think a lot of times, uh, people go at it really hard Mm -hmm. and, uh, either they're half, they have too much, um, too much personal stuff going on and then they have too much of the other stuff going on. And of course you lose the balance, right? Like mm-hmm. the balance is completely off and they're going at it really hard. Cause you know, people are, there's a saying that you have to sacrifice a lot to, for instance, uh, have your own business, have a podcast, have this. Yeah. It's like, I get it. You have to sacrifice a lot, but it doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice your life. It doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice your family. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice everything. I mean, yeah, you, you can be busy and, you know, with stuff like this and uh, like the stuff that you do and content creating and all that. It takes mm-hmm. a lot of time, right? It you does. have to, you know, like I sometimes spend hours editing a podcast, mm-hmm. a YouTube video, and I mean, mm-hmm. day sometimes. And it's like, mm-hmm. but I have to, like, okay, I'm going to put it away for today. I'm not going to work on this today and I'm going to watch TV, make dinner, you know, things like that. So I think a lot of people just kind of, they just kind of keep going. They're like, I'm going to make it, you know, and they're so desperate to make it because it's hard. You know, it's, it's, um, there's social media is so big and we see all these famous people and they're like, how are they making it? You know, and I want to do that too, but it takes a long time. And they to have get people there. that do it for them. Exactly. <laughs> they can yeah, hire and, marketing yeah. and they can hire all of that. You know, I, I wear all the hats in my business. I'm doing yes. it all right. And I'm sure you are as well with your podcast and, yes. you know, having your kids and your career and all that, like you're wearing many hats as well. And we don't have, you know, necessarily the luxury of having 10 people on our team. Right. To, to do, you know, the extracurriculars. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because social media is like a full-time job. Yes. Like that is, like there is, you know, companies that I've looked up and they, their, their only job is to, to post, tweet, stuff, put stuff on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, just that's all their job is. And they yep. know they're $1,000 a month, $1,400 a month. And that's all they do. 
Yep. It's we we do everything. Send us pictures. Send us this. Tell us what to say. Mm-hmm. And then all they do is they take care of your socials. And it's yep. it's insane that that's the full time job. But I mean, it's it is. Sometimes I'm like going through it. I'm like, oh my god, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And either you have to tweet twice a day, four times a day, <laughs> this a day, but this. You know what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm. just it gets really overwhelming. That sometimes it's like, all right, I gotta take a break and yeah. just like everything or retweet it. You know what I mean? But it's just yeah. it's just hard. It's just you know, I get it. I get it. And especially in your business and your in, in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And like, for instance, my wife and stuff like that. You guys are always talking to people. And yeah. it's like they take all that energy away. And you're like, I don't want to talk to anybody. You know, it's, yeah. just, it's hard because everybody has different attitudes. Mm-hmm. You know, every, some people are more easier going. That you can, It's just easier to talk to. And there's some people that are just like, oh, my gosh, she's so stubborn. You know, it's yeah. just... And it's, it's, it's because we're all different, right? We're human. So not mm-hmm. everybody's going to be the same, which is, which is okay. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about a, a failure or not maybe a failure, but something that you've experienced and that you've learned from it during your process in the fitness industry? Yeah. Fitness so industry? I guess like this is a little bit like it kind of like touches up on a few things here, but, mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a failure. If anything, it helped me figure out who I was and what I wanted and what I didn't want Mm -hmm. in my career. And ultimately from that experience, I was able to push myself out of my comfort zone once again and launch my own business. Um, I guess, you know, uh, something that I've struggled with and work hard at is imposter syndrome. I don't know if you know what that is, um, where you don't feel adequate or you don't feel like you know enough or you're not educated enough, right? Like, because you are, you're afraid, you know, uh, you're the fear of failure, you know, the feel of the fear of what people are going to say. This is something that has plagued me from the minute that I decided to shift careers. Um, when I first, like I said, when I first started this, like, holy shit, there were so many trainers out here, uh, so much information and people with thousands of followers, you know, the fitness influencers. And it's kind of like, who am I? Like, I'm no one, right? Like who's going to listen to me, the mom, you know, the normal, the normal girl over here, you know, and having to work through that has been a challenge. And being in the space that I was before owning my own company, it was heavy. It was really heavy. It was very toxic for me. So I wouldn't necessarily call it a failure. I guess what I, what I was failing at doing was not listening to myself mm-hmm. and knowing that it wasn't the right place for me and letting it go too long. What do you... How do you feel about this stuff? I mean, I'm not going to mention any names just in case. I mean, it doesn't really matter. They can't mm-hmm. do shit. But how do you feel about some companies that do you feel like some of these that, has, that have products and stuff? Do you feel like they're pyramid schemes? Like, oh, you know, like they sell you the protein powder and then you have to go work out with them or they get you to work out in their fitness camp and then they're trying to sell you their protein powder. Like mm-hmm. I and then they're trying to have you sign up so you can sell for them. So then they sign up more people and then they sell for them. And then eventually the one on top is the one that makes all the money. Yeah. Like, what do you think of that? Like, what do you, how, how is that? I mean, it just seems. It's out there. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it wears many masks. Like it could be supplements. It can be training companies. It can be so many things. So, you know, this is where I have to hold true to my values and my morals, uh, my integrity. And what I push out there is a direct reflection of me, right? Like, I know my intentions behind everything that I do. And one of the things, um, it, 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 it's, it's, a hard, uh, it's a hard thing for me to talk about because I don't, I don't want to cause any problems or anything like that. But... I feel that there is a lot of miscommunication and a lot of bullshit in the fitness space. Um, Women 
are exposed to this on a daily basis and it's very easy to fall victim to all of it. There's a lot of people out there who are like, do my workout program, eat like this, you're going to look like me. Okay, but you're not telling people that you're on performance enhancing drugs, that you've had a you know, Brazilian butt lift that, you know, you've had work done, um, that you're not all natural, right? Like there's a lot of bullshit out there and it, you know, integrity doesn't sell. It doesn't. People are visual, right? And they see these results and they want those results. So they're going to get after it. But what they're not realizing and seeing is it's not honest, It's, it's not honest. And they're falling victim to this this idea of what this program is or this supplement is, and it's not the real shit. You know, like someone can take a supplement and be like, oh, thanks to this supplement, I was able to have this muscle mass, you know, and it's bullshit. You're not telling people that you're on steroids or, you know, that you're taking Anavar or that you're taking all this other shit that's helping you freaking be jacked and, and, you know, juicy, you know, it's, (laughs) it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And being in this for almost three years, I see it and women don't know, right? They don't know any better and it's not their fault. Like I was exposed to all that. I fell victim, right? Like I'm not ashamed to say it because I make mistakes, you know, but I've learned from them and I've, I've also challenged myself to figure out, okay, what's the real deal here? I've educated myself and I think that that's the biggest power move you can do is educate yourself. I feel like their approach is horrible. Like, I'll tell you a story. I used to play basketball at this one park, and I met this one guy, right? We were playing Mm -hmm. a pickup game, five on five. And this guy comes up to me and goes, hey, man, I have my own gym. Um, You know, you want to come out? We do workout sessions. It'll be free. You can come over and train for free for a couple days and see if you like it and all kinds of stuff. So I was like, all right. So I showed up. And, uh, you know, they had like the cross CrossFit stuff and the rope mm-hmm. and the tires and all this. And you have a bunch of people dying outside because they're flipping a the tire they can't flip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I mean, I mean, some of these workouts were intense for people that had zero fitness, like at all. And they were like out there like hyperventilating. And after the workout, right, they'll give you this big speech. And then they'll be like, all right, let's go to the juice bar. Mm-hmm. And here you go. Take this juice. Uh, take this protein. And oh, this is will make you recover right now. You'll feel great. Right? So they're giving us all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. And he comes up to me. He's like, what do you think? And I was like, oh, yeah. It was, it was cool. And uh, he's like, yeah, what do you think of the stuff that you're drinking? And I'm like, eh. You know, I don't really drink anything with sugar. or I just don't like it. I just, I don't know. It feels, uh, well, I, you know, just try it and let me know. I'll, I'll give you a sample. And mm-hmm. then if you really like it, man, you, you know, have you ever thought about selling this? And right there, I was like, oh, no, I fell. <laughs> they got me. You know, it was a trick. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no. I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm not going to sell it. Oh, you ever thought about this? You you can make, you can own your own gym and you can go to Hawaii and you just follow my Instagram and look at it, man. You can, you can sell all this. You're promoting health. And I was like, oh, no. And I just told him straight up. I was like, you know what? Um. I like the fitness stuff and all that kinds of stuff, and I, I, I support it, but I am not going to sell anything to anybody. You know, I, mm-hmm. I came here to work out, not to try your supplements and then sell them to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's just not going to, it's not for me. So, you know, the guy got mad. And, uh, I, you know, I walked down, the guy was upset, and he sent me a message later that, you know, like, like you know, I'm giving you an opportunity. And it's like, wait a minute. I thought I went there to work out for free, like yeah. for a few days to see if I liked it. You know, I thought it was going to be like a CrossFit gym. But it was a CrossFit gym with like, here's the supplement and then you should sell it too. Yeah. And that's how they will get you is like, they'll give you, they'll, at the end of the workout, they'll, everybody, everybody, come on, let's go to the workout gym or to the, to the, to the juice bar. And that's, they'll give you their stuff that they will sell. And yeah. people will be like, oh, my God, this is great. And they'll buy it from them. So not only mm-hmm. that, but then they will start promoting it. And then they will start, start selling it. And yeah. it's a big, huge pyramid. Yeah. And at the end, the guy that has the gym is the guy that's making all the money from everybody else. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, when it comes to that, I, I don't like that kinds of stuff. Yeah. I, feel like it's, um, I feel like it's shady. Oh, I absolutely. feel like if you had like, the right <laughs> approach, like you approach it the right way with 
the number one thing in mind is health. Yes. Yes. That like, would be like great. If I promote it on my Instagram, it's because I believe in it, mm-hmm. you know, and not, not only do I promote it, like, but I educate people on it. Like, for example, creatine, right? It's something that I've posted about before, like, um, like frequently asked questions about creatine. I take creatine and I'll, I'll like take a picture of my creatine supplement, you know, the brand and I'll, I'll throw it on my Instagram. So that's where I'm really careful with what I do put on there because it is a direct reflection of me. Right. Yes. And, um, I'm not going to put something out there that I don't believe in. So I, I, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get away from all of that. And, 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 like, this is what I mean. Like, people need to educate themselves. They need, you know, knowledge is power. You know, don't mm-hmm. fall victim to the bullshit out there. Like, I'm not trying to demonize supplements either. Um, there's fantastic supplements out there that are very beneficial that can help support everything you are already doing. That's the thing about supplements. They're not some freaking magic powder. You take the supplement, you're going to have like buns of steel and some, some freaking <laughs> crazy Arnold biceps. It doesn't work that way. It comes down to the basics. Like, Right. Truly, supplements are there to help support and aid everything you are already doing, right? And and I think right. that's when like people understand that it's a game changer. What do you think sets uh, successful people apart from those who struggle to achieve their goals, either professionally or in the fitness, in the health and fitness world? for like clients or, you know, just people trying to get into this? Well, for me, truly it was ownership, like owning everything that I do, the hard, the good, you know, understanding that I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to have failures and that's okay. I'm human. I'm allowed to make mistakes. I'm allowed to not have everything together. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just have to be consistent and keep going at it. And I think that that's where you find success. And I've had to learn this and I'm still, I'm still working on it. You know, like it's not something that just comes naturally to me. It doesn't. I have to push outside of my comfort zone with this all the time, all the time. You know, I, I have to challenge myself because I don't like discomfort. I like to feel comfortable. I like to feel confident. And if I'm doing something that I don't feel like that right away, it scares the shit out of me. But it's not stopping there, right? Like, oh shit, I'm fearful. I don't know if I can. Maybe I'm not great at it. Pushing past that, that little, that hump, that's where you find success. That's where you find growth. That's where you find yourself and and really keep moving forward and, you know, trying to achieve your full potential. I feel like that's where it sets people apart, right? Are you willing to push past your comfort zone and push through your fears to get to the other side? And I've had moments, I'm not going to lie. I've had moments where I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. What are people going to think of me? Like, you know, are they going to judge me, you know, getting past, you know, those mindsets, those self-limiting mindsets, because that's exactly what they are. Mm-hmm. That's where you find growth and success. Like truly, like I, I get emotional because the last three weeks I've really challenged myself to not be afraid and to push past that comfort zone. And it has been so rewarding in so many ways. Yes. I think people are, you know, sometimes you have to push a little bit. There's a lot of people that are, uh, for instance, myself, I'm like mm-hmm. self-motivated. Yeah. I don't so need, am I. You know, I don't need extra like juice. Like it's like I am already the juice. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I just need to focus it into something. Mm-hmm. And for me to get something and to jump on it and, you know, I'm sure, you know, you're the same way. Mm-hmm. Going at it full force and, and uh, just having that extra motivation to, to, um, to get stuff done. People, there's some people struggle, right? Some people struggle. So what I'm trying to say is, is when you're not self-motivated, like mm-hmm. what, what do you do, right? Like, what do you do if you're not self-driven? If you're not, uh, if you're not like us, right? That we grab something and we're like, yeah, we're like we go at it, right? But mm-hmm. what do you do if, if you don't have any of that? Like, what do you, what can you do? What is it, um, how... I think that's the hardest part for people to be successful. Mm-hmm. 
Because mm-hmm. if you don't, every little thing, if you're not a self-motivated person and if you have, you're trying to make something and you have really negative people around you and they are constantly like going, oh my God, you're not going to make it. You're never going to make it, right? You're never going to yeah. make it because you are, you need people to drive you. Like you need success. You need things to happen, good things to happen so you can keep mm-hmm. going, right? You need that extra motivation right so so you know that oh my god i made it i can keep going oh my god i made it i can keep going but like people like us it doesn't matter if we make it we just keep going you know what i mean because we're we're self-driven you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. i think a lot of people also fail that way because they just they kind of they they want that thing from everybody else and it's like i think that they should stop thinking about that and just keep going because there is always going to be negative people there's going to be people that don't want you to be successful that, uh, oh, no, yeah. I, nobody's losing weight with your shit. You know what I mean? Like, you should just stop. Mm-hmm. And then they stop. And they stop doing it, right? They don't want to do it anymore. So it's like, what what advice can you can you give to people that um, that that need to be, uh, how can you get them to, to keep going, like to, to motivate themselves to, no matter what career goal they're trying to approach? I feel like one of the things that I came across that I feel can resonate, people will resonate with, is the fact that you fear judgment, you want acknowledgement, you fear being looked at a certain way. Don't give a fuck. People are judging you. People are looking at you to fail. You know, um, you don't need anyone's acknowledgement or praise stay true to who you are like like i said earlier put your blinders on right like quiet all that noise around you and keep moving forward you may trip you may fall but get the fuck up dust off and keep going like there's you every person in this world brings something so unique and you know, it, it's it's a shame when a, a lot of it is, is stifled and, and people don't want to keep going. It's like, you deserve to live your dreams. You deserve to reach your full potential. You are so deserving of everything good in this world, right? Like, it's hard for me because I am self-motivated. I, I, I actually crave and I yearn for like, growth, you know, even though it can be uncomfortable for me and it can be a challenge, I want it, you know, and it can be hard. Like, I feel like environment has a lot to do as well with people's accomplishments or, you know, how, what, how they are with themselves. Um, trauma can really have an impact on someone. You feel inadequate. And I know that's something that I, I struggle with inadequacy, right? Um, therapy, that's something that I'm working on myself. I feel that everybody could use that. Um, and I'm not afraid to say it, like I, I could use it as well. And I feel like it would be so beneficial, not only personally, but professionally as well. Ask for support, you know, like find the support that you need. If you're not getting that support at home with your family, with your friends, look outward. It's the same thing that I tell like women with endometriosis, like everyone, everyone's situation is so different just because I have, you know, support with my husband and my kids and my family, same with you, doesn't mean that someone else does, mm-hmm. right? Like everyone's life is so different. If you're not, if you're not finding the support that you need to keep moving forward, look for it, right? Like get out there, network, reach out to someone, find the support that you need so that you can follow your dreams or accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish. What does the future hold for you? Okay. Um, I'm going to continue to grow my business, uh, expanding my reach, you know, being able to reach more women, a greater population, um, empowering women all across the world. I am also working on this new program I'm developing. I don't want to, I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm I'm still, I'm not ready to launch it yet, but it's going to be a four month program uh, where, you know, women are going to are going to have resources and um, I'm going to be helping them, you know, uh, find their, their version of strength, their version of health, their version of, you know, what that means to them. 
you know, because a lot of times I have a lot of women who do come in and they're like, these are my goals right here. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to be in a size eight jean, right? And during our journey together, these goals and these whys, they shift, they transform into something deeper. You know, their whys become deeper, their reasonings become deeper. And they, they, it's almost like an epiphany. I love this moment. I, I see it every time with my clients and I, I like patiently wait for mm. this moment. Like, you know, I'm like, it's going to come, it's going to come where they realize what this journey means mm. to them and what they want to get out of there, wh- what they want to get out of it. And like, that's what I see myself doing, continuing to support, empower, guide, educate women out there about what it means to be healthy, what fitness means to them. Yes personally because it's very different for all of us yes. well it was like very nice having you on the show and uh i, had a know, great time. <laughs> I need to we need to do it more often because this is something that uh people need more of you know they need more yeah. uh, better advice than just listening to bullshit news and being sad and depressed and you know if you're gonna listen to shit listen to something that it's going to motivate you to do something that, you know, there's not everybody that is a fitness instructor or coach. They don't have a perfect life. They have a family. They have some yeah. ups and downs. They sometimes have chronic illnesses, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's who we are, right? It's who we are. And some people think that, oh my gosh, she must be, look at her. She, she has, she must be rich. And it's like that you don't know. Right. Everybody is mm-hmm. different. We're human. Everybody is human. Yeah. Everybody is different. Everybody goes through their struggles. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. this is something that I hope that this is a, a very positive and at the same time serious episode because, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like this is serious. You know, the stuff that you have, the chronic mm-hmm. illness is serious, you know, even though we, we laugh at it and stuff like that, but it's a serious thing. And there's yeah. a lot Absolutely. Worst things out there. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how much more worse things, but I, I don't know like the diseases or the chronic illnesses, but there's a lot of other stuff like cancer and, you know, like just mm-hmm. terminal stuff that, that there is in this world. And I think if uh, we try to be a little bit healthier, promote health, it's always good. Yeah. Uh, can you, you want to, um, I'll give you a, a moment so you can, how do they find you? Where to go? Instagram? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what is it like? Tell us about your business and how can people get a hold of you and how can, uh, like, what is it that you're, uh, like, the stuff that you're offering? Yes. Yeah, so I am on Instagram. Um, I do have, like, a TikTok. I'm not really, I like I said, I, I have, I set myself limits and boundaries. So right now I'm mostly on Instagram. I am on Facebook, but my Facebook is private. So you can definitely go search me at SBB underscore health, underscore fitness. So it's strong, bold, and beautiful. Um, You can slide into my DM, say hi, you know, get to know me. Um, If you're looking for a health and fitness coach, you know, trying to figure out what this version of, of health looks like for you, like I'm your girl, you know, if you're a mom who's struggling to balance all, you know, everything that you're juggling on a daily basis and prioritizing yourself, like I'm your girl, you know? Um, so yeah, like I offer nutrition programs. I offer like, um, training and nutrition. It's all online. Um, and if you want more information, like, you know, feel free to reach out anytime, you know, it's, it's individualized based, based on the person. So I don't really have a one size fits all. Um, everything I do is customized. So, and your Instagram mm-hmm. is the same name as the Facebook, or it's um, well, I am under Carla Anthony mm-hmm. on both, but on Instagram, it's SBB Health Fitness. SBB Health Fitness, okay, excellent. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. so we're, I'm gonna make sure that on the description of the episode, I'm gonna put all your information and your website and you know the books and all that stuff that we talked about. And uh, it was a pleasure having you here in the show today, and hopefully, we can uh. We can keep doing this, right? Heck yes. This is awesome. Thank you for having me on Bull Talk by Joe. Yes. It was super cool. And I'm looking forward to the next Carla one. Carla Anthony, fitness and health coach. Look her up. Until next time, peace. Bye.